When most people think about algae, they imagine common seaweed on the beach, or maybe the thin layer of green growing on the surface of their backyard pond. Within the next 10 years, however, we may more commonly think of algae as a source of energy. Bigelow Laboratories, located in Booth Bay Harbor, is conducting research on algae as a potential biofuel. And this algae may be different than what you see on Maine's beaches. Head researcher Willie Wilson says there are thousands of types of algae used. I mean, you can sort of look through the doors there, I mean, they're just like tubes and tubes of different algae. There's a lot of brown ones in there, a lot of, a lot of green ones, red ones, there's the pink ones yeah. sitting at the back there. In these tubes, Bigelow Lab stores 2,700 different strands of algae, most of which are microscopic species used for research of biofuel around the world. Much of the research involves the oil produced by algae, which Wilson says is a part of the algae's photosynthetic process. They've all got oil in them. You know, if you think of the basic, uh, you know, how an algae works, it, it basically takes sunlight and carbon dioxide and converts it into oils and sugars. And that's the basis of it. It's the start of the food chain. Mm-hmm. So. Although algae products have begun to be incorporated in biofuels, this technology is still largely in the research and development stages as there are several factors to overcome before algal biofuel is successfully introduced to the market. One of these factors is getting the algae to grow faster so that biofuel companies can harvest useful material at a rate that will effectively supplement our energy demand. It's just like agriculture. You, know, you go into agriculture, they want bigger, better, faster. That's what, that's what they're going through with algae at the moment. You know, they just want you not know, so much bigger, but so it's just more of it growing faster. And so they're looking at a whole range of different methods and techniques to try and get them to grow a bit faster. Researchers have found that one way to induce this larger, faster production in an energy efficient way is to provide LED lighting within the growing algae culture. This provides a solution to the problem faced by biofuel companies and researchers in algae production, known as self-shading. If you imagine uh, a, a pond uh, where there's light coming from above and the algae start growing on the surface, right. then it's, uh, start going, it's, it's going to start shading everything underneath it. By developing special containers for algae cultures called photobioreactors, researchers are able to supply the LED light to the algae in such a way that will avoid self-shading. As a result, the algae are able to reproduce more quickly and provide a greater abundance of oils. Several lighting techniques and photobioreactor designs are currently being tested to find a strategy that would provide a quick and abundant algal growth. In order for algal biofuel to become a cost-effective energy source and realistically become a part of our global energy market, this type of efficiency research is essential. And, you know, the only way they can really start competing efficiently is if the price comes right down. If you can get, you know, the price of a, a bottle of algal oil is, is going to start matching or is less than oil that, that, that comes from oil fields. Other factors that play a part in making algal oils cost effective are separating the oil from water in the algae and supplementing the algae cultures with nutrients. Researching these issues takes a considerable amount of time, money, and energy, causing conflict in the scientific world. Dr. Susan Brawley has been a part of the scientific community for over 30 years and currently conducts research at the University of Maine as a professor of marine sciences. I fear is certainly a debate in the scientific community about whether it is reasonable to put money into algal biofuels expecting them to replace a large amount of our petroleum. Mm -hmm. And there are some people who think that's possible. But they're risky projects, you know. Mm-hmm. They, they may not, in the end, be practical. But that's how discoveries are made. Wilson is among those who see hope in algal biofuel research. The, I mean, these people go about a good point, uh, <laughs> but the oil that we have uh, is not going to last forever. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, development trying to look for these alternative sources, and algal oils is a you know, a rel- you know, it's relatively easy to grow uh, algae. Mm-hmm. Um, so why not start now? Because in 50 years' time, when oil, you know, extracting oil from, um, you know, geological sources becomes so prohibitively expensive, people are going to be saying, well, I'm glad we put all that investment into algal oil. 
Regardless of this debate, Wilson and Brawley both recognize the need to reduce energy consumption. Especially in the U.S., we waste so much energy. Change in the way we use oil, change in lifestyle so that we, we do work in a much more energy efficient way. That's got to be a number one priority. In Booth Bay Harbor, I'm Amy Becker.